Hey guys, uh, I got a request from Crazy White Dog 78 in response to my video Tinder Fungus and Coal Extender Varieties. Um, in that video, I actually demonstrate using uh, four different fungus as a tinder. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have chaga or true tinder fungus or uh, false tinder fungus or what's commonly called horse hoof fungus. So what I'm going to do, he wanted me to, uh, he asked me if I could go out and show the kind of trees that those grow on and the places uh, to find those trees I guess was what he wanted. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head out in the woods today. I'm going to try to identify the trees that grow those different types of fungus that can be used as tinder. And also I'll try and give you a brief idea of the overall habitat, the overall forest type that these different trees grow in. And just so you know, this video might be pieced together because I have some other videos uh, on my channel already that somewhat explain that. So I may just take pieces out of those to fill in the blanks. But we're going to go and head out. You know, it's a great day here in southern Michigan. We finally got some snow on the ground. And, uh, you know, it's here it is up in the middle of the day. And it's uh, about 25 degrees out. So, hey, it's pretty nice. Get out in the woods and have some fun. And, try and uh, share some information about uh, different types of trees and fungus. This tree is American Elm and it's e most easily identified from a distance by the base shape. As the tree grows up it spreads out. in a vase shape. That's the easiest way to spot American Elm from a distance. This tree harbors Ganoderma lucidum, Ling Chi, which is uh, the t one of the tinder funguses. I typically find it on cut stumps. There's a lot of dead elms around here and they cut them so they don't fall on people's houses and such or in the road and you'll find Ganoderma lucidum growing on the dead stumps of the elm. Another feature which uh, you can't really see because of the snow is the roots tend to uh, spread out as well. Um, let me see if I can spot any on this one. Let me adjust this camera. What you'll find uh, once you get up close to the tree, hopefully you can see those marks. There will be a straight line that's vertical you know, vertical, not horizontal. And coming out from that will be little, other little lines. That's where the beetle gets in there and introduces the fungus which destroys this tree. That's an easy way to tell it close up. It has alternate leaves that are toothed and somewhat lance shaped. But really, the best way to distinguish it is by that vase shape from a distance. Here's an old elm leaf. American elm, this is. And the Ling Chi, which is a medicinal fungi, it also works as a tinder fungus. And you can find it growing on this tree and it will persist for years. The fungus I used in the video was one that I found 
growing on the roadside in a ditch on an elm stump. It looked like it was probably a year old. I brought it home, threw it out in the backyard, and two years later, I went back and recovered it from the backyard, and it was still intact. It hadn't rotted, and uh, just decided to try and use it as tinder. So that's tree number one. Tinder fungus number Here's one. Here's a close-up of the marks left from the Dutch elm disease. And also a uh, couple pictures of the Ganoderma I harvested from the elm stump back in 2008. <coughs> I find both the American elm and the black locust growing in secondary forests. You'll find lots of shrubs growing up. It'll be kind of dense on the forest floor and uh, you'll have these black locusts and elms kind of spread out in the mix. Now they're coming up on the first tree here. This is uh, beech.